I'm happy be with another reaction with the toxic couple. Uh, another drama. Another time with uh, George Yanko, Andrew Tate, Logan Paul. The drama continue, and since the drama continue, we keep doing the podcast the reaction, guys. I'm enjoying it anyway. So this time is uh, George Yanko went to the podcast of Jake Paul and he's speaking about uh, what's happened and everything. Basically, they're gonna get to everything. And then they have another podcast who George, George invited uh, Paul in his podcast and they're going to speak uh, about things that they didn't speak about here, about it right now. So let's just dig in guys and uh, see what's going on. But first, make sure to check the store guys. I have go- cool stuff, so but I need a second opinion from you guys. Uh, make sure to sh- check the store guys. Let's go, guys. Finally made it happen. The following is one of my favorite episodes we've ever filmed. I didn't get rid of you! (laughs) (laughs) We are getting into the drama. What happened between Logan and George? So when you think George needs a therapist, what category am I following? Emotional intelligence. Emotional me. Yes. No, 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 stop. All right, fuck this. I'm out. And when I come back, I'm going to show you I'm stronger and I don't need you. George has been a friend of mine for over a decade. He helped me film some of my first ever social media videos, Snapchats, Vines, back in the day. A best friend, a a brother to me. Yeah, basically, who are not familiar with this kind of Vine, it was a company back in the days. She gathered them all in one one building and then they started doing... um, and then they start doing Vine guys, so they start shooting videos, 6 seconds, it was Logan Paul, George, it was uh, An- Anwar Jibawi, it was, um, I forgot a lot of them, uh, King Bash, uh, yeah, it was uh, like this, and they pay them for staying in one building and just uh, creating videos. Cut through the digital world recently, showing off his ability to reach deeper into people's souls and bring out it's their true. true it was authentic good. self with viral podcasts Andrew Tate, Patrick Bet David and the list goes on. He is also Tony a Robertson. devout follower of Jesus Christ and so we go deep into many matters around religion, spirituality and I think this conversation will help a lot of people. It'll be fun, laughable. This is the one and only George Janko. Please enjoy. I saw you were at the Heat game. Yeah, them boys got blew out. But y'all had amazing tickets. Listen, the seat ain't on the wood. The seat's not good. Hey. Well, I got them bitches last minute, too. But you, but you got them on game time? Yeah, on game time. So we found game time, gametime.co. And this uh, is the best app that we have found for purchasing tickets, hands down. By far, you will actually get a full refund if you get fired from your job. For There's one no way. Events. Yes, that's. I mean, game time. It, it, it's the best. There's no it's way. It's the best. Game time. Wait, there, what, what's the cancellation thing? Event cancellation protection. If the event is canceled, automatic cash refund. Can cancel tickets up to seventy two hours before the nice. event. So you Buffalo Bills fans might be in luck next year. Get a refund if you download game time. But again, I think the best part is being able to see where you're sitting, so you know you get a good seat. Um, go to GameTime.co for any tickets that you are going to purchase. It is the best platform. Go and and make sure to use promo code Jake, J-A-K-E, for $20 off of your purchase. That is promo code J-A-K-E for $20 off your purchase. Oh, they could. Oh, and speaking of artists. There he is. Today's guest, the one and only... Mr. In the Club himself. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. When I step God. up in this club, girl, girl like you rockin' to show me love. Hey, yo, gonna looking hot tonight, huh? Hey. <laughs> yo, I, I thought of the craziest shit because he was like, oh, bro, you can't call me Gunner. Well, he looks great. We'll, we'll fill him in on the backstory. I haven't seen you in a bit. Yeah, I was okay. My man looks like a triangle now. You got that upper body like you've been in prison, dog. Like, you, you look good, dog. Like I told him he looks like a rapper now. Before, he looked like he worked at, like, a place that made you sandwiches and he was Arby's. fed up and he didn't want to be there anymore. <laughs> Arby's, we have the beef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the meats. So I'm the new co-host now. I, I, I left, you know, the old the old podcast. Yeah. I got a good raise over here. It's it's. I feel comfortable good here. Fit, right? Yep. Yes, sir. And, thanks uh, for having me. No, thanks for joining uh, sal- as a salaried worker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Nine to five you. vibes. I like. Because he's not he's not really a guest. That is the announcement. Is that George is the new uh, co-host for for BS with. Jake Paul Christ. and George Jenko. Yo, I, all joking aside, when you guys said that, that meant the world. You guys were talking very nicely after that whole drop. You were the only people on YouTube that were like, "No, nah, we like that kid." So yeah. I really appreciate it. That was very sweet. What uh, What was everybody else saying? Uh, they were just kind of like following a narrative that he was out there. He switched up. He's so fake. Yeah. Logan gave him this, this, this. like, eh. Sometimes you just gotta live your life. I think it's funny oh, when people in the, on the internet like try to decide everything for people's lives. What? Well, what well, the internet is, you have to understand, like, you, like uh, there is a book I read that try to not take anything personal because they, they didn't mean you at all anyway. Something happened in their life, so they're trying to get it out. No matter how they're going to try to get it out, and they just try to get it out, and you was in the way. So nothing personal in this life, just try to keep moving. And no matter what you're going to do, there was always hater. If you change it a little bit, like what you was doing before, they... The hater gonna come and stuff like this. So just keep moving and keep following whatever you direction you're taking and that's that's how life goes, guys. Just don't stop. You cannot stop, that's all. No matter what you're doing, you cannot stop. And uh, an example like George, he didn't stop is just because he felt like all his universe is falling. He didn't know what to do after he left that, uh, where he get uh, how he gonna get started, what he gonna do, but uh, things go just keep moving and things gonna go to places by themselves and Allah is the best planner so just follow it but they don't have their own lives figured and, out and they're, they're also, like, <laughs> they're, they're I didn't like, think it was going why, that way <laughs> why, why? <laughs> Taylor Swift Travis this part why don't do this do, don't do that how could you do this well they're invested right so like if you watch uh, like a friends episode right I just realized that the writers wanted Chandler Bing to cheat on Monica that's a big thing. Like, that would have ruined my view on Shane True. And Monica. So when you are a character on a show and somebody watches like a Fallout, they pick a side. They try to figure out like they're invested. So and I understand. then there's the, the common consensus, which just gets followed. P- most people online don't actually form an opinion for themselves. They just kind of see. They're so desperate to fit in with the group that when they see something going one way, they just they jump on but board. But the I common understand. consensus is based off of five percent of my life that mm-hmm. I allow you to see. Like people who create this whole idea. Yeah, but we go we go off on the fact that we are showing everything, so they think that we're seeing it all. It's all a it's all a perspective. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how are you guys doing? I feel like good, man. I feel like you guys are doing like so good, and I walk in the energy is like slowly like. No, no. Well, we were what doing did? we're doing terrible. Well said. Yeah, absolutely. Like literally. So absolutely. yeah, everything has gone wrong today. Yeah. Well, well, no. Let's but bring now it it's up. going right because Gunna's here. When I step up in the club, I like finish it, song. finish it, keep going. Girls like to rock it, show me love. I'm actually keep honored, going, keep know, going. To my son, they can't get enough. Oh, spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what'd you say? What'd you, what'd Machine. When, when Machine. I step up in this club, girls like to rock and they show me love. Dancing, Dancing to, my, to my song. They can't get enough. Then I pop lock and they show me love. Let's go. On, bro. For I reference, know. George has a music video from 13 years ago. <laughs> I was yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Nine years old. When that we'll put the out. visuals up on the screen. You, you know, it's fun. <laughs> Thanks, Machine Gun Belly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Freaking coming for you. I, just, I don't want to say anything. I just want you to put a picture of him, clear picture with the underbite, beard shave, and Jay Leno next to each other. And oh no! I made I made the craziest meme of myself. <laughs> I, I just because I roasted I was roasting Nina in the group chat and then I felt bad. Oh no! And and so I I sent her the one where she looks like the evil guy from Spider Man. William we could, Defoe. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. But no, she, no. But me and Nina. What? But me and Nina are, are like we're on that level now where we can roast each other. But so you told her but she I was like, like 
Oh, yeah. I was like, yo, like I made this one of myself. <laughs> we'll put it up on hey, the dog, screen. You, you look like a like Alien versus Predator. Mm, yeah, yeah. I feel like once you own it, bro, like can't be said. No That's more. the eight mile approach. But that shit is hilarious. Like the little dandelion. Yeah, it's yeah. great. And on it. It's great. But yeah, machine gun. You know what's funny? Um, <clears throat> I heard that song within probably seven minutes of meeting you. Dude, do you this is like <laughs> it's like your go-to. It's like your go-to approach. That's all I had. That's all I had. I did, when I first met you guys, I didn't have anything, dude. I had these music videos that I was making by myself. When you guys were in, like, you had your brother. You know, I don't know if you made music with people growing up, but I just had myself and my Middle Eastern dad. And my dad's like, we're going to make the best music video. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And this shit turned out hot. I and I was your like, dad was your A&R. No, it was fire. Cool. My dad showed up. He showed up. And so, like, everybody at my school was like, that's weird. And they started bullying me. And I was like, oh, I got to leave school. So I had to leave school. Did you, You're from Chicago, right? I was born in Chicago, but raised in Arizona. Did you shoot that video in Chicago? No. I shot that in, uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona. Got it. Wow. And by the way, like, you, we know how production is, yeah. but imagine being a pro, like in a production, you've never done it, and your Middle Eastern dad who owns a liquor store is like the <laughs> PR, like the, I mean the the, the, uh, the producer, like he, it was all over the place. So he'd be like, hey, this week, get ready, put your dancing shoes on, we're doing this. And then he was like, we're gonna have to push it back a little bit. Who did the choreography? There was no choreography. No, there was. There, there was, was some, some sharp dance moves in no, there, George. Those are, uh, that's where I started, bro. I started dancing. <laughs> And then uh, my, I told my mom and dad, I go, I want to be like the main, Justin Timberlake at the time was like the mm. guy, right? I was like, I want to be like Justin Timberlake. And my mom and dad were like, no, you don't sing, you dance. And so I just started writing like all the time, like poetry. And then I, and then I wrote that song and then I started producing. And my parents were like, oh, he's actually pretty like good at this. But they did the music video, but I kept telling everybody at school, like, yo, you don't even understand. Like, oh, no, this music video is going to be hot. But I kept pushing back the date. So I became the belligerent liar, dog. Like, like just oh he's always telling people it's been nine months I've been telling people well, that's classic this with weekend. artists that's that's hey, what brother. artists do. Hey, say they're releasing music yeah like Jasper's know. album drops tomorrow right well really? it, no it doesn't it was supposed oh. to oh is my dad doing your, your album <laughs> yes <laughs> it is. We're not doing right now. Oh, that shit's gonna turn out hot it yeah, might take yeah. a little bit it's hot. <laughs> but anyway so I woke up the day and I needed people to be in the background because like I'm shooting a music video yeah. and asked everybody at school. And only two people showed up just to fucking show up and look to see the disaster. <laughs> and oh, then man. they were going to go back and tell everybody at school, like, yeah, yeah, no, we, we, like, we made it clear. He's dumb. We don't talk to this kid anymore. <laughs> so they showed up. And like, my cousins that were shooting, they brought, like, I'm talking all the bells and whistles. So they showed up with trucks, and they were like, oh, shit, this is going to look, like, legit. Yeah. So one text after another, and all of a sudden there were, like, 300 kids from my school. See, like, fuck them. Yeah, bro. Yeah, they don't know party. until we hot. What about the budget? What it was I'm like saying. a full fledged production. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't a. Everything was done by my dad. Like That's literally, hilarious, literally bro. every That's single hilarious. thing. That's why when people are like, "You're only in this industry because of your dad," you know, like when somebody's famous and then they have like a son, and mm. I was like, "Why are you getting mad at him?" Like, if your dad is in the industry, right? Like mm. for example, your kid wants to be in the industry, they're gonna probably punish him for being in the industry because they're like, "You didn't right. deserve it." Sure. Your dad did all the work, but it's like. Your dad, is, your dad should help you regardless. I'm going to teach my kids, like, the perfect rebuttal for this because I know it's going to happen to them. So they're going to say, you're only that because your dad is Jake Paul. And I'm going to have my kids say, you're only poor because your dad is. <laughs> There's a lot and of then, aggression in you, huh? Pay, no, for, like, for so that, much no, success. Sorry, God, bro. Sorry, so my dad. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're only poor because your dad is a fucking hillbilly. Like, bro, shut he the fuck up. He came after his own people, dog. Jake, you're on a, you're on a vibe <laughs> right now, bro. Nah. Dude, I've never seen somebody have so much success. It's still punched down at the. You, okay, all right. Well, nah, it, is, I, it is interesting, I'm right? You, you work. To well, no, because they're punching up. At me, <laughs> yeah. so I gotta punch him back down. Yeah. Nah, that, that's why probably not Jake, what I'm gonna. Why did you beat up that homeless? Well, you just started yelling bit gibberish at me, so <laughs> I can't let him talk to me like that. That's, it's probably not what I'm gonna teach him to say, but I just thought no, it's that right just now a joke. Yeah. Like I, I was gonna teach them. <laughs> to Hopefully, say that. you have kids with the girl that you're with now, and then he'll learn. Like, nah, I should probably act like my mom, very calm, yes. patient. <laughs> Yeah, she's way more mature and nice and level-headed. So yeah, I'm I'm starting to act more like Yuta, which is which Sorry, is amazing. You're fucking but that's in this hard economy. Oh my <laughs> god, dude. Anyways, buy my merch. It's out now. <laughs> what the fuck? Guys, it's the biggest game of the year.
by the way too guys check the stores i have a lot i have good stuff there in it y you may like it you may not but you anyway you're gonna give me an opinion they're the soup but you know what's funny is uh logan we're in our apartment you know at the corner there above erwan and he was like yeah like i i met this kid who can like sing and dance like justin bieber i'm just gonna invite him up to the into the, <laughs> <Jeeber>. <laughs> into, <laughs> into the dude house. by the way they did pull up i had like i'm not kidding my apartment was smaller than this room it was way smaller than this room. oh i remember that oh my god it just brought back so many memories i forgot and and in this room that's not i'm not exaggerating it's up to that camera that's how big this room is and you lived in Fairview. I only had one, in. only one furniture, and it was my bed, and I made that shit so nice for them. And I was <laughs> just jumped on with their shoes, and I'm like, oh, uh, 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 please don't do that. And then I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, I, I didn't think they would show up. Like, like I just met this guy at the gym, and like an hour later, him and his brother. And by the way, this is his brother. This is Jake. No, because, bro. Bro, I, you did not want to be there at all. Because no, yeah. you were like, and I was like, and you, went, and you started jumping when you were talking. And then you went, wait, And I was like, yo. In my defense, slow down. I didn't have any friends, and it's been a couple months since I've talked to anybody. So the fact that I had two dudes, yeah, I was just like, dude, I used to go shopping for nothing. I just wanted to talk to people. At the, at the <laughs> so like when these guys pulled up and I was like, well, and by the way, they're fucking cool. I've seen them on the internet. So it's not like some dude at the gym. It's like now I have a friend and these guys are like coming up hard. And I was like, bro, I got to fucking impress somebody. <laughs> So I just started when showing them. Up in this club, that was your plan to impress I was, them. I was showing them my beats, and they were like, "That's sick," and they just dabbed me. <laughs> they left. <laughs> and I was trying like, to get signed to the label. Oh. Was that the goal at the time? Music was that? Your... That's what I came out here for. Mm. I came not here, L.A., but yeah, that's what I went out there for. I was interning at the time, and uh, I was I was just really good and at like trying to you know figure out my lane and just kind of like how we're all doing it, like. You're passionate about something and it kind of spins into something else and molds it. And now I'm back with the heart of David. Thank you for that shout out, by the way. Yes, I really appreciate sir, that. Um, so and I just, I was young, so I was just trying to find a, a lane. And and then I get a text two days after that. And uh, uh, Logan goes, uh, yo, me and Jake are shooting this sick ass vine called Liar Liar Pants on Fire. And it's in quotations lit. And I was like, all right, nice. And he goes, come over. <laughs> Wait, so he texted the way he made YouTube titles? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. It's not verbatim. In parentheses. But, but like, like, I was like excited. I was like, let's go. So I get there to, it was and it was at a different location at the time. Shooting Wait, something. it was a, what, it, was a it was a vine. It was a vine. And I'll never forget, the second time I saw you, you were sitting down, looking at me in my eyes, sitting down, and there was a pool right behind you. And you're like, dude, and you're dumping gas on me. Like mm. gasoline, not like I was. Yes, you were. You were <laughs> dumping gas on you. You're like, yo, look, check this out. So he's going to be like, liar, liar, pants on fire. And then he's going to throw a match on me. Now, listen, I thought I was showing up and they're going to have like, you know, like a graphics team pretend there's flames on these guys. And three times they kept throwing matches and he wasn't lighting up. And I'm like sitting back and I go, I'm new. Here. Well, back, back in the days, the, the vine was uh, real because. It was literally real. Everything they do, they do it by by themselves. That's why we call it dumb. The internet was so dumb anyway. But uh, they didn't have big budget to do anything. They needed to get famous by doing everything. So things pay off. And they make a lot of good uh, vine guys. You, you should check them. They are really funny. But I don't think this is an okay thing, right? <laughs> so then he goes, no, this is not working. We need more. So that they took alcohol, you know, like the band-aid, the, the, like, uh, the, the, like you cut yourself, that type of one. Yeah, sure. Not like a... Like, Rubbing alcohol. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fucking dumps the whole bottle Jesus. on him. I, I remember like, this now. We were sitting on stairs. Yes, you were. I and, fucking remember this And now. then you light yourself on fire, and I was like, <laughs> and I was like, no way. And then he jumps into the pool, and I was like... <laughs> In my mind, I go, now they'll probably realize this is stupid. They won't do this anymore. <laughs> Jake goes, was that good? Or do we have to run that back? And I'm like, are you fucking crazy? Dude? Like, yeah, so Antonio was so dumb. 30 minutes for him to dry up. Then they blue dry him. Then they put more gasoline. And I'm like, in my mind, I go, how are the apartments letting this happen? Because like, people are just standing above looking down, smelling <laughs> gasoline and fire. And that was the first time I ever watched them shoot content. Same. It's funny because Logan would always make me the like fall guy because he was like the older like <laughs> he could like con me into being the one that gets lit on fire or like to go do the dumb prank where I have to like yeah. 
Jakey, do you want to be in this or not? I can <laughs> yes. get Marcus Johns right now, bro. I'm He'll be like, here in two minutes. Do you want to be in this? I'm like, all right, all right, fine. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll fucking light me on fire. It's not even my vine. Like, I'm not even getting the... He doesn't the, even tag you? No, yeah. He probably didn't. <laughs> he so probably funny. fucking didn't. That's so crazy. So, uh, <laughs> there, there's obviously a huge history between you, him, and Logan. Um, and then, obviously, you fucking crushed it these last few months. This has been insane. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All glory to God. I literally had no idea how to get out of that. And uh, I was just like, I'm going to just stick to this podcast thing. And I found my, my wheels. And now, season two is looking... Just unbelievable. So thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. Yeah, dude, it. it's, been, it's been awesome to see. And you're, obviously, this is all coming off of Impulsive. Mm-hmm. If you don't mind me asking, where did things stand with you and, and Logan and the relationship? That's that, that what, what I'm waiting for, for the whole, I want to see how they're going to speak about it. Uh, that's what I w- was waiting for, because till this point, no one speak about this at all they just put in some random shit videos like oh he speak about this but just to click and stuff like this i click anyway <laughs> i get i eat the bait anyway but I, all i'm saying is that they still till this point no one in the internet spoke about this so maybe today they're gonna do or maybe it's just a title we don't know uh just agreements uh just like how you disagree with him right but i feel like you guys are might be a little tighter because you guys are blood right you can't get rid of blood. yeah uh, as much as I've seen you guys try, you guys tried hard. Yeah. But uh, uh, I think it was just the we had personal issues between each other, and it's hard because it, it's hard because my love never left, right? And when you go around the world and people are dapping you, I'll be like, "Hey, yo, fuck Logan," like that, and I'm like, "Yo, like chill, like that's that's still the guy that opened up the doors for me and he took care of me." So like, it's hard. I don't forget where I come from, and also it's like all the other memories that people don't see is very good memories. And I, it, to me, it was just like, we're, we'll get around to this at some point, but my... I'm going to speak about this point, like, uh, when when he says, like, oh, fuck Logan. You know, you, uh, you have to understand also something like this. You do all good, 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 good things. Uh, the one time you fucked up, they all, that, that's the only one that matter. So that's all the only things that people are going to remember is the last thing you did. It doesn't matter what you do. You fucked up one time and that's the last, that's the only thing that people are going to remember. So that's why I'm telling you, like, don't give a fuck about nobody. At all. Don't give a fuck about nobody. And as, as he says, like, uh, always remember where you came from and who opened the doors for you. So no matter what's happened between you guys and life goes and stuff like this, but always be respectful to speak, to, to not speak. Do not speak about another man behind his back. That's all I'm saying. Do not speak about, about it. Just not, not, doesn't matter. If it's a man or a woman. Don't speak behind anybody. That's all. That's what we should. I don't forget where I come from. And also, it's like all the other memories that people don't see is very good memories. And I, it, to me, it was just like we're, we'll get around to this at some point. But my plan was this. I think in the back of Logan's mind, regardless of how he thinks and regardless of what I've done, as a friend, I think the the aspect of him being above me in the industry, in his mind, he'll always think, well, he's only sticking around and it's because he gets something out of it. So in my mind, I was like, all right, fuck this. I'm out, and when I come back, I'm going to show you I'm stronger and I don't need you. And that way, when we do have a conversation, you know it's only out of love and I only mm. want to be here because of the relationship. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I feel like when when you guys were going through that, I just, like, didn't believe it at first yeah he kept texting me he's like this is a prank like, you guys are gassing up this shit. yeah and i was like because why and it doesn't seem like necessary but also you guys are so passionate both of you and i don't know i just always was like yeah they're gonna be friends again and figure it out and i do still believe that i think at some point they'll be putting yeah this aside and there's nothing nothing can't be fixed and that's what exactly. I would like to see. Because I, I miss, I miss oh, everyone just being to friends. A gnarly fucking MMA match. It's funny because, like, the, I, I, like, regardless of what he's ever done to me, I don't think I'd ever be able to learn. You get what I'm saying? Like, when you have that type of love with someone, I don't know if you guys ever had a relationship <coughs> where you fall out with somebody, but, like, even if he fucking just struck me in the face, I couldn't remember anything besides everything good between us. I would never be able to remember. We be punching each other. Up. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. If you ever punch me in the face, like I, I, it's not gonna go good for me. But I'm going out fighting. Are you still doing music, by the way? No, no, I haven't in, in some years now. Yeah, he's acting like me. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Twenty. Yeah, I got busy with this guy. Started 
and busy. And to be honest, and I'm not just saying this for camera, and this might this might offend a lot of people that are gonna watch this, but you two are the only people I like that Jake brought around. No, no offense to any of you guys, I just met you guys, okay? <laughs> Except for Gus, it's your birthday. I love you. I just met you. You're, you guys are all well, looking very yeah, disappointed better. right now. I, we just met. I'm well, just talking about collectively new, as so. friends hanging out. Uh, you were a magnet to the worst human being. Actually, I'll save that for my episode. Sorry, go ahead. I'll let you lead that. <laughs> I'll save the gossip and talk shit for my <laughs> show. <laughs> so sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I, I forget where I was even going with that, but I appreciate the compliment. No, I, yeah, I really like, You guys were very down to earth. You guys are very down to earth, and you guys, uh, I think people at the level that Jake's at now needs people to be like, nah, chill. Sure. And I think the other people were kind of like, no, 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 do it again. And I'm like, all right. All right. We're, we've been terribly rude. Congratulations. You guys just got engaged. Yeah, that's that's rude, bro. Run it back. We'll start from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we should have talked about first is because that was rude of you. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Because it's BS rude. with Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> The, what is the worst podcast ever? I like mm. it. It's it's Thank very you. all over the place. No, it's like one of those TikTok podcasts like that just started like three dudes were like, yo, we should make a podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I like the vibes. The vibes are good. Thank you for Chaotic. congratulating me on my Getting engagement. Getting engaged. Yeah. Best friend, Shonda Del Rica. She actually... I'm thinking about it maybe in the future. Uh, maybe in the future. I start doing uh, like this conversation as a podcast, just talking with uh, people in the internet, like from the subscriber. We make this just like this. We set up the equipment and uh, we just have a fun conversation and we we speak about different opinion and it's just for fun. We do it just for fun. We post it and stuff like this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, of the George, the George Anko show. Yeah. I, I you know I knew I was gonna uh, was gonna marry this woman like right when I met her, but it's it. I think when you meet the right girl, it scares you because you have to be the right man. And sometimes you either step up to the plate and are that guy, or you kind of like watch her walk away to somebody else. And when I met her, I was like, no, 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 it's now time to, like, shape up, get everything in order. So I, I actually owe a lot of what I got going on to her because she really did motivate me. I really, I love you with all my heart. All of my exes, please text me. I'm ready to be this way. Oh, my God. I'm ready to be the right man, <laughs> and I'll pick one of you guys, um, be the lucky winner, and we'll go on a cruise. How are you in a relationship? Are you a loving man? <coughs> I don't want to talk about that. Are you a cuddler? Are you, just tell me has, one thing. Are you big or small spoon? Jasper, this is such a topic because I literally heard him <laughs> the other night. I don't know if we can say this, yeah, you can, you but can. I literally heard you on the phone begging a girl to be the little spoon for 25 minutes. It wasn't 25 minutes. It was like nine minutes. <laughs> and, and That's a no. weird thing to defend, man. <laughs> like the timing of it. I was doing that, but it was only like half the time. <laughs> sure. <laughs> brother, I'm not going to sit here and lie. Um, It just depends, brother. I'm Fuck. You. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he said I wasn't gonna bring it up if he didn't. No, say no, it, I'm small spoon, bro, and not yeah, because I like of my height. I mean, spoon. it comes like an action figure, like Sometimes not sold like separately. Little spoon. Like, yeah, yeah, sure. You little spoon's awesome, bro. Listen, it's, it's I'm like having a house, the, it's a like life. A, just give me some warmth. You know, it's like what I mean? having like, on a little jet pack. Like, mm. I mean, <laughs> ooh, I like it. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. little backpack vibes. Yeah, yeah, I'm little spoon, but like big little spoon. <laughs> I, I think it, it is going to be funny when you get into a relationship. Yes, bro, I have mommy issues, bro. Yeah, but I'm not about to talk about mommy this issues. on camera. Wait, we that's not why. I love my mom. Issues. I have no mommy issues. I just like being small spoon because no, it's cozy. No, no, ask him about, ask him about his mom. How's your mom? Uh, she died from a heroin overdosing on my bro? Why would you ask him about that? Why would you ask about that? She literally died on his eighth birthday. Are you joking? You're a dick. Are you joking? Is this a bit? Nah, you're messing with me. No, she's dead. Nah, dude, don't do these no, jokes. No, she actually was, like, is super dead. I'm being so serious. But, like, she was a party animal. Like, I just knew how to party. I'm not going to lie. You'll be all right, though. She's, like, super dead. And I like, am very sorry for your loss. She died on my birthday, which is tomorrow. So, tomorrow, like, I got to think about it. So I'm, I'm, They're I'm, just making a joke. Just tell me you're no, not joking. <laughs> I'm so it's sorry. crazy of you to ask about that. That, like, is that's so triggering, and you're, like, a piece of shit. <laughs> So it is, Ija. No, she's super dead. <laughs> and you keep reminding me of it. It's like a hey, constant hey, reminder. Is he, is he messing around? No. <laughs> no, on so on his serious. mother's life, she's dead. 
<laughs> yeah, my mother rest in peace. My mother is resting Dog, in peace. You guys are wild, bro. Yo, you're the wild one for bringing the, it up. I am very sorry. I should have known that this piece of the, shit has no soul. <laughs> is he the piece of shit or are you the piece of shit? I'm, at, I'm, a, I'm you're by the one association, that, I'm a piece of shit. Hey, we, we were best friends for like six years. Bro, but they got rid of <laughs> me. I'm not part of the crew anymore, dog. <laughs> no, I didn't get rid of you. They sold me for life. I didn't get rid of you. <laughs> I didn't get rid of you. Uh, so sorry about Is it your birthday tomorrow? This podcast to me right now, dude, is about your head, bro. The, I'm, I am very, very. I'm smiling right now because make sure so you guys like and subscribe. I, I, I love you. For episodes every week, okay, bro. for I'm more sorry. bullshit. It's okay. Fuck both. Of you. Listen, can you, can what you, did I do? Can you do one thing for me? Yes. Can you look into that camera right there and say, "Download better and play better." Please? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> for, <laughs> then why would you ask me the one thing I can't do, dude? Yo, when his album drops, maybe next year, maybe this year. Yeah. Please download it. Download it and stream it. There's I a don't know how to pivot from this situation, boys. Can one of you guys pivot from no, this? No, no, no. We're going to let you just drown yeah, all the she, way. She loved heroin. Like, it was like, like what's your favorite meal? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing at us? <laughs> yeah, that is fucked. What the fuck? <laughs> Like a little empathy would be, it would go a long she way. Like, right like, like there was, <laughs> she loved hamburger helper and heroin, and she had a red car that she named tri- Ready. Triple H that, that from the WWE, hamburger helper and heroin. It's just <laughs> Triple H from the WWE. In my arms, it was my birthday gift to go see her because she also had cancer. Oh no, no, no! I'm so serious. Dude, there's no I'm, way you guys are doing this to me really right now, bro. Just maybe <laughs> move on. Yeah, it's time to move on. Um, <clears throat> so how about those Yankees? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> there's three co-hosts. You guys got to pivot here. You guys got to pivot it's, it's, here. It's, I, we have a very interesting way of dealing with trauma, and it's 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 what we just did. No, it's it's actually hiding how, it and yeah. masking it. And yeah, no, it's yeah, just, just joking. It's just joking about it. That everything. Oh, so it wasn't real? No, it's, it's real. So We're back to this. Okay, yeah. dog. It's like actually not a joke, but like. How is your dad? Are you good with your dad? He's like my little brother. He's like having a son. It's pretty cool. Your dad's like having a son? Yeah. Like he pays for his stuff and all and that. Like That's that. just dumb. I get the frustration when you're around. Yeah. I yeah. get it. Yeah. I get it now. He that had this lap was all the <laughs> anger from his. Mother not being there and his dad being his son. And That's also my at. three other brothers being my, four other brothers being my son. Shout out to you guys. Time for that pivot. Uh, Andrew Tate <laughs> interview, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he needs to deviate. Man. We're definitely going to talk off camera when these guys aren't around. Uh, okay, Andrew Tate, please go. Yeah, man, you fucking ultra viral. Yes. Unbelievable. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I think everybody probably saw the interview, but what was the whole experience like going out there? How did it come about, and, and what was that all like? Uh, weird story. By the way, I'm going to speak about this before they lunch. Uh, the video, the the, the the podcast that he did with Andrew Tate, it was phenomenal. He stepped up to the game. He asked good question. He was ready for it. And uh, for the people who didn't check it, please check it. Uh, I have it on the internet. I divide it to three parts. Uh, on the channel, I divided it to three parts for you to follow it step by step. <laughs> with that. Yeah. And I actually have it uh, recorded too, which I'm actually very excited about. After the pivot off of Impulsive, I was in a state of uh, fear. I just didn't know where to take things. and I didn't know what to do. And so I prayed and I said, God, like, where do you want me to go? And the reason I'm not upset with Logan or Mike anymore is because I had a lot of learning. I had to grow up. I had to learn how to deal with things I didn't know how to deal with, and I learned a lot through that obstacle. So to be honest, like, I thank God every day for what happened. So when that happened, I asked God, I go, what do I have to do? And God was like, you need to stop pretending to be you and be you. And what you are is somebody who cares about people. And wants to understand it was fake. And see them in a different light. And so then while I was praying, I saw me having a conversation with Andrew Tate because while – while all that was going, I would always defend Andrew because I already knew where his direction was, but I knew his deliverable was wrong, right? And we have that a lot in this country. There's a lot of people that say they won't vote for Trump because they, they support his views, but the way he goes about speaking them is like hard to defend them. 
So in my heart, I was like, man, if I could have a conversation with Andrew, I wonder if I could bring out a side of him that like people will be like, okay, I get why George likes the things that he talks about. Now, I don't know the man at all. And uh, I just started putting my head down and working and working and working. And the opportunity came. And when that came, I was just like, this is insane. And I knew that this episode will dictate where I go next. Right. And how did how was it a conversation between your team and his team? How did it? So I I would wake up every day, not even exaggerating. I'd wake up every day, I'm like, guys, we're gonna have an episode with Andrew. It's gonna change our life. <laughs> like, and by the way, we had no leads. And then uh, one day, I had a Pat, uh, Patrick David episode, and me and him got along very well afterwards. And while that episode went live, Andrew reposted something that I said, and I was like, yo, if this isn't my opportunity for it. I don't know what is. So I reached out to Patrick and I said, Pat, like, you don't have to do this, but if you could, I'd really appreciate just the introduction. I would love to, uh, to just have a conversation with you. And uh, he was like, wait one moment. And then next thing you know, like I get a DM from Andrew. And, I was like, Damn. and then he's like, do you mind coming to Romania? And I said, absolutely not, I love travel. I went there and uh, while it was happening, uh, we did an intermission. Uh, and this, is the, this is when I knew things were gonna be different for this episode. When he got, when we went to the bathroom in between part one and part two, he looked at me and he goes, this is gonna do really well for you. And I was just like, oh, cool. And after that, I just got a influx. I think I grew like a million people. Like I had like 700, 800 on, on YouTube, a couple hundred thousand on. Me, I, to defend this point of view, I didn't know that even he, he launched a podcast, so I didn't follow it. He And then I started following it after he did with the Andrew Tate. I started following it, and I see it's, uh, the bunch of um, people that he invited. There, there was not like uh, very, very interesting to be to watch it. But from that moment when he interviewed Andrew Tate, from that moment he, he went viral. And, uh, yeah. And I think Andrew Tate is the famous... Sp it's the truth. If you hate it, you liked it. It's not. It's not important. What matters is the truth. That he is the most famous man on planet Earth right now. He is the most famous. Everyone knows who he is. It doesn't matter. Everyone knows who he is. So from that moment, of course, he's gonna do well because he's interviewing the most famous guy. Like I had like seven hundred, eight hundred. That's on the truth, guys. A couple hundred thousand on Instagram and. All my other channels just started going crazy, and all people were saying is, oh, this is who you are, which is hilarious because that was my prayer. And God was like, yo, you got to stop pretending. And I think I was just super insecure because think about it. Like, I jumped on a show that was already popping. I am with two massive people that are doing their thing. The guests are incredible. So I was always trying to entertain and not really just be myself and be in the moment. And so that episode changed me because I was so locked in on just getting to know him, doing my job as an interview. It taught me how to be an interview. And from there, I picked up traits that I have now, and God willing, it just keeps going. And uh, it, it's, it's, it sounds cheesy, though. I believe that everything that comes from me that's a blessing comes from the Lord. So I work hard, but it's if true. God's not going to bless my, my fruits, then I'm not going to have any fruits. And when I asked God to walk with me in this interview and prepare me, I thought he was preparing me for that just one interview. But that interview opened so many doors up. I, I have guests lined up past... March, April, May, like lined up. And these are guests that I didn't even dream about having conversations with, let alone having a relationship with them. And so, yeah, I just, I don't know where life is going to go. I'm just grateful to be where I'm at. And I've learned one thing most importantly, you could either be two men, a man that wants or a man that's grateful. And so be I both. just want to be a man that's grateful. So be I'm both. Grateful where I'm at and, uh, and I pray it just continues to be that. I love that. And it's so cool to see, you know, I think, for people watching too, like everyone deals with losses or maybe getting fired or ups and downs or whatever it might be. And my life got so much better. And I found myself completely after losing, mm. which was one of my biggest fears. And it sounds like the same because you're like, Oh, that's it. <laughs> exactly. Dude, that, right. It's like, Oh, that's the worst. Okay. And you just double down Ain't and it. it's like, Oh my God. And now the biggest fear is out of the way. So you're like free mm. in a sense. And then you are kind of, come closer to your your truest self which is pretty amazing it's like two l's really make a w and it's like exactly what you went through at first it's like oh what, what's gonna happen what's gonna happen you know you're in that gray area but that's where the beauty and the growth is and there's the it frees up the space and something magical can can come in 
do you, I don't know if you had the same feeling, but you realized what mattered after that. Like you were like, oh, okay, I understand what I should actually be putting my joy and peace into. And when when it comes to your relationships, your loved ones, like, uh, and I think with any career you have, there's gonna be like this. So if you if you know that you're gonna be here one day again, but it's fine because you're gonna be here. Just like you, if you look at stocks, anybody who does really good in stocks, they're never just going like this, right? But they're still good. They're going like this. And I think it's just a it's a pride thing. When when you put your pride in your passion or your work, it stops becoming passion. It starts becoming pain. You're like, oh, I have to upload this thumbnail. And it has to be quick. And it's like, but when we started, we were just passionately making videos that we thought were good. Writing our pants. We- yeah, exactly. Like he describes right now. Me, I'm, I'm thinking I'm doing the best, like, you know, like the, the best videos ever. I'm, I'm, it's the truth is not I'm doing the best video ever. It's just a start at the beginning. As, I, as people talk to me about the lagging, I have a lot of videos lagging. I understand that because, first of all, I don't have the money for it. And second of all, I am doing it with a, an iPhone. As my camera is an iPhone. So it's just a start. Be patient with me, guys, and we're going to move on from, from there and we're going to do better content. But for the moment, I'm just being constant to drop in everyday videos, every day, every day. Even though I don't find the time between study and work and dogs and stuff anyway it's fucked up but anyway we praise uh, allah for everything alhamdulillah for everything guys and uh, in the future we're gonna do better content and we're gonna start uh yeah but if you want to support me guys i appreciate just buy something from the store just i gift it for your friend or for your family or for your wife or something like this it's just a support and uh, we're gonna move on But we're we gonna grow up guys just together passionately making videos that we thought were good lighting our we, pants on fire yeah and, <laughs> and just you know just doing things that you and your friends thought were funny and it wasn't that big of a deal to you but you found success because you were passionate about it and i think true okay if, if i'm gonna be opened up about anything i just realized when i was in that place at the time i was journaling and i was just like i don't feel like i'm when i look in the mirror i'm not proud i gained weight i was just so insecure i was lost i was confused and so I, I wrote in my journal, I said, God, I'm too scared to move. I'm terrified, but I know I should. So if you could do me a favor, my prayer is take my feet and place them where you want them to be, not where I want them to be. And ironically, when the whole Logan and Mike and the impulsive thing was all that trauma and all that bad stuff and all that chaos and I'm scared, but that's what I asked God for mm. because I was too scared to leave. So God's like, all right, I'm going to push you out. Well, there seems to be a parallel between earthly matters and spiritual matters where these things require Jake was just talking about those two L's making a W so like with earthly matters maybe it's a big fall in business that then becomes the foundation that you build the biggest business of your life off of that also is a commonality with spiritual matters where a lot of people's spiritual awakening come from this as I made the conclusion life uh, guys in my life from my understanding point and from my experience that I get in life like Everything have his own moment and everything have his own door. You cannot pass the mo- you cannot reach that door before the, your moment come. Like you, you just cannot reach it. That's just how it works. And for another door to be open to you, you need to fail. It, you, you cannot just be su- success, 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 and you telling me another door is gonna open. No, you need to fail in one point for you for another door to be open. That's just how it works. And failure. If you go back in time, ev- everyone fail in one point. You cannot be just successful without failing. It's a hypocrite if you just be successful. You, you, it means you're doing something not right. You just being successful means something is, you know, spy. It's not right. You get what I'm saying. You need to fail. For another door, for Allah open another door for you, you need to fail. I'm not telling you you need to fail, but I'm telling you from the progress. You, you're moving from a progress. You, uh, from a, from a, uh, from a job you have or something like this, you move in with it. You follow in your passion, and in that moment, it's just you run to something that make you fail, and then you're gonna rise up again. That's just things how it works. From a pit, 
it comes from a, a, a big down in their life. Big Do you know why I figured this out? Yeah, sure. In the scripture, it says that God, well, he's, he's, a, he's a God, but you have to humble yourself in front of God, right? So you must submit yourself to God. And Jacob yeah. uses the metaphor of wrestling with God. And so I tell people that if you're wrestling with God, you haven't submitted to him. So when you're fighting somebody in mixed martial arts, when they have you in a place where you're either going to tap out or you're going to pass out, right? But when you tap out, they have the decision of doing two things. One, showing you mercy. This one, I didn't two, get it. Ending you right there. Because he's That's a Christian. And when you submit to God, you have to be vulnerable and be like, all right, I submit to you. And men only submit to God when they know it's time in their life. Through, I have a, I have a okay, I, I disagree on this one. Anyway, you need to submit your uh, yourself to God from sense, beginning. Um, anyway, totally it's not when you are like ready from beginning. But it's through definitely like meditation, breath work, spiritual ceremonies, and in the in one of the first ones where like I really became enlightened, awakened, whatever it was. I there was a moment where I just was screaming like I don't know, I don't know anything. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't know anything, and be, just being completely humbled <laughs> by seeing like the power of not only life and earth and but but of God. And I just was like I don't know anything. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like almost like begging them to like. Chill. It's a perspective, and that's why in the Bible it says it's easier for a big rope to go into the end of a needle than a rich, powerful man to see God. Because if a rich, powerful man only sees it from his point of view, he's never going to see it from God's point of view. Because a human's point of view is so much smaller than God's point of view. So God just wants a relationship with you, and that's why he's called a father. Because he does, like, when you have a father, a good father, you listen to your father, you, you obey your father. You're not disrespecting it because then the relationship could have a fallout. So, it's 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 kind of in a place where when you say hey god you're actually in charge i don't know anything i don't i don't have the power that you hold where do you want me to go how do you want me to live you're being vulnerable and ironically think about any type of relationship with your girl um with your music and with your passion when you're vulnerable and real it's the best way to go about it. that's what vulnerability is actually real strength and the people who are afraid of it uh, are actually the ones who are the weakest but I, I agree it's like when you step out of the way and you're almost this like proxy of god or like the higher beings and that's where you can like find your sacred responsibility where i asked that same thing i was like yo like what what do you want from me and it was like yo i want you to become world champion because you're gonna show like so many kids out there and inspire so many kids out there that no matter or or adults, whatever it might be that no matter when or where they start in their career they can become the best in the world at it in six or seven years and he's like i need you to do this you have all the tools and capabilities and resources to make this happen and it's just up to you to make it happen and you, and you found your purpose in that. yeah exactly and i had this conversation on my last podcast i said if you have identity issues which our country has identity issues in any form, it could be the one that everybody's talking about that's a little bit too much, we won't get into that. And then we have the smaller version where it's like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do on this earth. I don't know what I wanna be. I don't know what I should go to college for. And I said, if you don't know who you are and you're lost with your identity, maybe it's because you haven't revealed who created you. How do you know where you come from? If I have a, if I have a, a Mercedes, I'm not taking it to Honda because when Honda opens it up, they're gonna be like, oh, I didn't, we didn't create this. We don't know what's going on inside of this. So when you went and breathed, which I find it very beautiful, because check this out. Do you know why they called him Yahweh? Say it again. Ya Yahweh. Yeah. Oh, no. Is the, is the, one of the names of they uh, they call God. They, they say, I am Yahweh, Yahweh right? Yahweh. Yahweh is because every... Yahweh? I believe it's in Christianity, this one. Uh, it's in Christianity. It's a group. Uh, my wife had a friend... Uh, She's uh, she's Christian, but from a group, and they call uh, yeah they call Allah Yahweh. I don't I didn't hear it anyway. Breath is God. Yeah. So Yahweh. It's literally the sound of you breathing. So you were calling out to him through your breath work. Yeah. Which a lot of them did back in the day when they okay, didn't know. Okay, that's that's good information know to know. To God, they were just breathing and submitting themselves to God. Well, but yeah, breath work raises your consciousness and raises your energetic vibration as well which can elevate that state to get you closer finding your purpose in life why it's like going up and and 
everyone looks at God as like looking up because it's that higher state of consciousness. So that for me was the first step on my journey to becoming spiritual and 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 finding and finding God as well was the breath, which is super interesting. I didn't know. My that. only advice to you is keep finding Him before He finds you in a bad spot, because it's either going to be two things. If you ever have a relationship with God, it's either I'm going to get stuck in a really bad place, and then I'm going to introduce myself to God, or I could keep growing in this life that I have, but with God. Basic. How did it start? Basically, from all this, from this moment to all topic, they're going to move on. It's going to be about the religion, guys. They're going to speak about Christianity, about religion, um, how to find the purpose in life, how to find this. It's like spiritual things. The, the podcast is going to go spiritual. So the thing about Andrew Tate, it was just a few things about Logan Paul. Like I told you before, it's n- they just is the title. So they s- didn't speak anything about what happened exactly. But if there is a video, real video, please send it to me. I would like to see it. Even if I do, don't do a reaction on it, please send it to me. I would like to check it. Start for you, because that's my, my mom has said that to me. That's been her. My mom's Christian. I'm, I guess, agnostic. I'm, I'm very open to the I- idea of the Christian God, a God, any any God. I'm, I'm open and I'm searching. Um, my, my mom said to me that her fear for me is that I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to fall so hard mm. to be awakened to god that, that that's what she's scared of you know the crazy part what he says right now is really true you know you people are so much it's not i would not i, I don't want to say like they are stupid i don't want to say they're stupid because they have brain i like give them a brain they give you a brain he give you a brain to think so think please you when the people are the most down when something hit them so hard so hard till they fell down they don't know anything then they start believing but you have to understand you need to believe in the good and in the bad not just when you hit your, your bo- rock bottom you have to understand this guys it it doesn't matter which you where what is your background christian jewish or muslim you need to have morals you need to think about morals you think you you need to work with the rules because with no rules we we're not we're like animals basically with no rules with like animals so Allah give us a brain to think so we need to think everything is going with the words everything is wrong with it only few people who still have common sense with it go I have to fall so hard to be awakened to God that, that that's what she's scared of but she's you know with her belief she's your mother pray for you to find God of course yeah. and that's gonna be your destination yeah that, so that's the worst part about it bro because her prayers before even your health, it's going to be letting you have a relationship with God. So that's where it could get dangerous because God is a God of, I'm going to answer your prayers. And sometimes our prayers that we ask are dangerous because it's like, well, God, present yourself, right? And then the way God presents himself might not be the way you want it. It's because you're being an egomaniac in front of him. But, but I'm also open and, and, and willing for that. If that, like, yeah, yeah. Listen, man, if, if, if what's on the line is eternal life with yeah. God, then a, 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 a a painful fall to my ego here on earth is a minimal price to pay for that. Yeah. So if that's what it takes for me, I'm 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 here for it. Yeah. Because because I do I I. Just and I would like to share this point of view. Like they say, people like say, oh Allah, give me a sign. Oh Allah, give me a sign. I would like to see you exist and stuff like this. That's that's just nonsense, guys. Just just think with your brain for one second and look everything. Look everything like around you. Look everything. Everything have a purpose. Everything was created from something. So you was created from something. So just think with your brain and do not be ignorant. You know, you you, you cannot be ignorant. F- waiting for a sign like, I don't know, like a lightning ball or something like writing on. The, I don't know what you're th- expecting from the sign, but everything around you is a sign. Everything is a sign. The trees are a sign. The earth is a sign. The mountain are signs. The stars are signs. You are a sign. And you, every time you look at yourself in the mirror, you are a sign that something created you. Desire that relationship. I've never had an experience with God to make me open to that relationship, but I, I stand here willing for wh- whatever it takes oh, that's to beautiful. get there. But I, I say that to ask, what was it's it not an for as you? An was, was it you building it? Did it take a fall? What was your beginning of your spiritual journey? Before I go to me, I, I will want to just stick yeah, sure. to you in just two seconds. Um, you just admitting that is the first step, right? That's the best thing you could do. Uh, 
Ask for wisdom. Wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord. For example, are you good with your mom? Yeah. You have a great relationship with your mom? Yeah. Were you a bad kid growing up? Yeah. yeah. What was the yes. first thought you yeah. did when you did something wrong? The first wrong. thought I did when I did something wrong. When you knew you were going to get in trouble. Uh, I just hope I don't get in too much trouble so I can keep doing bad shit. <laughs> well, for me, it was I don't want to disappoint my mom. Mm. And me not wanting to disappoint my mom, I didn't want to break her heart, led me away from doing the decisions that I wanted to do at the time. My friends were getting high at school, but if my mom ever found out, she'd be heartbroken and she'd have trust issues with me. And then it would put her in a state of fear and panic. I don't want to put my mom in that. So I'm going to, right now, I'm not going to do that. And so just because I wanted to, it steered me away. Now, as a 30 year old man, if I would have done drugs at that age, I would have been lazy. I would have never gotten to my dreams, my aspirations. So the fear that I had with my mom led me to where I am today. So fear is not a bad thing if you use it correctly. You're either going to fear everything around you or you're going to fear the Lord. Because you, if you fear the Lord, you won't fear anything Question else. Question though, what if your upbringing is like the polar opposite of that? Like you don't have that moral structure of like, I don't want to disappoint this person and everything that's showcased to you is in a negative light. Like mm. for instance, like my dad is a fucking gang member. Mm. Mom's a heroin addict. I have four. So basically, we're gonna stop it here, guys. It's, everything's gonna be here from from this point, from this moment to it all the way. It's, it's gonna talk about uh, the religion and uh, Christianity. I, I find it a really good topic, uh, but I don't think it's gonna be interesting for you guys to follow it. So I'm gonna put the link uh, for the people who are really interested in it. I'm gonna put the link, and you can follow the original video directly. And from this video, I'm going to move on to when George invited uh, Jake and we're going to see how it goes there. And then from that moment, we're going to move to another video where Pitt David invited them. Uh, I forget his name, Mike. They was talking about it earlier. He invited him and uh, they spoke about the, the situation, how it went and stuff like this. I hope they're going to also speak about the situation anyway, guys. So thank you guys for watching with the... Uh, forget the words thank you guys for watching i hope you have uh, had uh, whatever just check the store guys i forget the words i'm so much tired check uh, check out the store guys i'm i hope you're gonna find something you like and that's just a support it doesn't matter it's you uh, what i'm saying is like it's not important if you're gonna i hope you're gonna enjoy the uh, what you're gonna see but it's just a support for me to do more because in this point i am fucking break i'm breaking i don't know in this I'm, I'm 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 lost to be serious with you guys i'm really lost uh if i had a podcast i would talk a podcast i would talk about this for a uh, decade i will speak and you know with different people but i'm just doing the reaction and i'm speaking guys with you i hope you're listening and thank you for listening anyway and uh yeah just check the store and buy something nice for your wife for your girlfriend or for so all for you guy, all for you and it's just a support even if you don't enjoy it's just a support guys <laughs> see you guys